It was a bright August morning, year 2004, sixth standard, and plus one was standing in front of 6,000 odd students, supposed to read out the morning headlines in front of all the students and faculty in the bright podium content. It was bright. The sun was shining brightly, but coolly. And high above him stood the national flag waving and fluttering gracefully. But his heart within was pumping at its hardest. That was a moment which is called nightmare in broad daylight. That's something that Prasubur desperately wanted to run away from. That is something he definitely wants to do again and again right now. Good afternoon, dear enthusiastic hearts, nervous mind, and forced listeners. <laughs> that incident, what happened, was a person scared of stage. It is said that your past activities make you different from what you are today for tomorrow. What we did in the past has changed us, some way or the other, some trait or the other, to what we are today. Perhaps that's what's called experience. Do something today in a way past we couldn't have done that gracefully. That preserved, or let me say, that me, that time, really felt like running away from the stage desperately, but he couldn't. Teacher is there, principal is there, 6,000 students as classmates is there. He was gone. Something like most of the speakers are when they come on stage right here. <coughs> Still, he had to deliver his speech. He had no other option. But the end, there was some change that day. In the first one minute, his heart was beating loudly. He was not dancing to one stage. <laughs> After the end of the second minute, it lightened. Heartbeat, by the way. <laughs> At the end of the third minute, his voice gained amplitude. Near the end of the fourth minute, when he's gracefully standing on the podium reading out the news headlines, the headlines ended. <laughs> and when I walked out of the stage, I looked behind with a grinning smile at the podium. And I knew that podium had lost its characteristics of afraidness in me. I was no longer afraid of going back to that. A reason maybe throughout my school life, I landed back over that again and again. What exactly happened? There was a transformation. Perhaps this lack of stage fear helped me lead others in my school life and college life because all of them were afraid of the same podium, which I wasn't afraid. What exactly is talking on stage? I always got this question revolving my head. Reading news lights, the news headlines, or in an office, if the manager says, this is your work, this is your work, this is your work, I want it done by EOD. Is that called talking? Or if you go outside somewhere and someone needs some facts and figures and tells you, is that called talking? That is something like, can you please talk about yourself? Do we do normal talking at home was what always revolved around my mind. Do I tell my dad what's to be done by the EOD? Do I tell my mom what's been the menu and I really want it? No. Words of emotion, words of request, words of news and words of dream. These type of words flow in our home atmosphere. But do we see any of these out on stage here or in an office or anywhere else? I doubt that. We don't hear such words. It was again the year of 2004. It was my 10th stand, 12th standard graduation day. Graduation days in Bangalore happen before you write even your examination. <laughs> you pass or fail, that's a different matter. Let's enjoy the February month happily. <laughs> so that night, so many friends depart. That night, saw lots of emotional and tears and floods going through the school ground and many more places. Students bid farewell to each other, hugged them, spoke with them, tears rolled out from their cheeks. That night, I did not talk. That night, 
I spoke. All the fun that happened in the school life, all the punishments given by teachers, taking the blame to go along with your friend in a punishment, all the embarrassing moments we did and we cried, that night we sat and laughed over it. And all the crushes and plans and the adventures we planned in school time which never occurred or failed, we laughed over that too. That night, none of us spoke. Perhaps I could not tell my heart that night that boss, don't be sad, be happy. Doctors can gracefully and easily say, even when the patient is dying, all is well, he'll recover tomorrow morning. <laughs> but I could not tell that to my heart. Perhaps an indication, God told me, don't try doctoring. So what is basically the difference I figured out between talking and speaking? You bring a person on stage in front of 6,000 people and tell him, read morning's news headlines, he is talking. You tell the same person that this is your, what you do the whole day. He can structure some up and tell, morning I did this, afternoon this, evening this, now I am doing this. But if you ask that same person in front of 6,000 people, what's your introduction? Talk about yourself for one minute. What happens? He is dumbstruck. It's as if he bit his own tongue. He will murmur. We don't have our counter, then he'll start with, um, I am this. So. Actually, he started this way, and stage movement comes into picture at that point. Our counter, that was not us. So, these people can talk. This is what we have been trained more for. Speaking comes once we start getting comfortable on stage. I don't say my past experiences have made me out of stage fear. No. Even if I take a paper right now in hand and stand, trust me, my hands tremble. And this is our purpose, it happens. <laughs> but my past experiences has led me to one thing. How to control this storm within your heart. In time. Maybe the second minute or the third minute. The paper will hopefully not shake. <laughs> so this is the major difference that I have learned between talking and speaking. For now, I can actually do both on stage. I can talk, I can speak, I can do both together. To many, this is not even a problem. I'm sure that quite of us over here were excellent speakers like Ashwin, who does not need to come here to practice how to control a storm within. <laughs> but there are people who know how to speak, agree. But experimentation on speaking, I doubt that many of us will try that on stage. We are so comfortable with our own home zone, like Rachel is comfortable when he stands here. <laughs> but we've got to go out of the skies and start going out of your own home zone. Only then can we experiment. Now the question rises, in front of whom to experiment? In front of our parents, you talk anything which is not sensible, it is the best speech in front of them. <laughs> then home again, our friends, before you start the introduction line, they will conclude it. Then you can't practice in front of them either. You need a set of strange, unknown people who have the same weakness. Get them together. In front of them, start speaking. Now these are the ones who will actually help you. Simple question. Which crippled person laughs at another person crippling? No one. <laughs> You need to find such cripples, bring them in the gang and start doing. For me, I feel my most financially negative, educatively positive act would have been joining this club. <laughs> I had to pay which I didn't like but I love the club. <laughs> and trust me, I mean it, I renewed. Okay? So, I'm really liking it. Now, not liking this particular club but the chance to experiment with speaking. In all, I would just say this much, my right now fear is how to experiment. Learn humorous speak, how to speak humorously and there's another person who's very humorous like Ratchit trying to speak seriously. <laughs> we have all mixed and combinations when you're strangers to each other. So I would just say this much, I was afraid of public speaking and speaking when I was in school, year 2004. I'm afraid of experimenting now, 2016. And this is the stage where we get to learn. If there's anyone out here, anyone out here who is having the same problem which I had in 2004 or 16, walk with me. Let's
practice together and let the footsteps be behind to inspire others.